Dr. Lalit, and you've really now grown up a lot from your MD times. And at least all of us are extremely proud of you. And today you. we look forward to hearing from you. Very proud of you. And we can, I ask uh, Arpita to introduce you and you continue with the lecture. See, there are more than 50 people. We are waiting to hear from you. And in times to come, I'm sure you'll make a name for yourself and for your institution. Over to you, Dr. Arpita. Yes. A very good afternoon to one and all. I, Dr. Arpita, on behalf of the Department of Pediatrics, welcome you all to the le 10th lecture in the series of Georgian Pediatrics Departmental Trust Alma Mater e-lecture series. And uh, continuing with that, I am immensely proud and uh, uh, happy to introduce our next speaker. Uh, uh, he's a very dynamic uh, alumni of ours and a dear junior. He did his MD from KGMU uh, and uh, went on to do his senior residency from Ames, New Delhi. And then he did his DM in pediatric critical care from PGI Chandigarh. And uh, now he has joined as an assistant professor and is looking after the pediatric uh, intensive care unit in Arimal Hospital, New Delhi. Over a short span, he has more than 20 publications and uh, five book chapters and his areas of interest lies in pediatric ARDS and that's what his topic for today is and uh, acid-based disorder and stimulation. So I welcome you Dr. Lalit Takia and over to you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you ma'am. Uh, I really thank my teachers and organizing team to give me this uh, opportunity to present uh, a presentation in the alumni uh, webinar series. So, without wasting time, I start uh, with the presentation. Uh, uh, my screen is visible, ma'am? Yes. Okay. You are on. Uh, so, start, uh, start with the case. Uh, Master M, 14 months old male child, brought to you uh, to try his area with respite distress for a few hours with alleged history of uh, diesel ingestion. Rapid breathing for six hours, and on examination, child had tachypnea, increased efforts, and uh, bilateral crackles on auscultation. His saturation was 76% on room air and 96% uh, on 40% FIO2 on oxygen support. This is the initial X ray, and child was started on nasal prong oxygen followed by NIV. So, I will cover this uh, topic under the following headings like burden of disease, definition, pathophysiology, clinical features. Management include ventilatory and non-ventilatory and outcome of the disease. So come on the burden of the disease. The incidence of ARDS varied from 3 to 12.8 per 100,000 uh, per year and around uh, almost 10% of uh, uh, PIC admissions and uh, consists of 20% all ventilated children uh, in the PIC are from ARDS. So uh, what is ARDS? ARDS is a clinical syndrome caused by disruption of the alveolar, epithelial, and endothelial permeability barrier unrelated to the cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Means, uh, it is a syndrome of inflammation and increased permeability that is associated with constellation of clinical, radiological, and physiological abnormalities that cannot be explained by but may coexist with left atrial or pulmonary capillary hypertension. So, uh, uh, before proceeding further, let's uh, discuss some uh, brief history of the ARDS. The initial description of ARDS given by the OSBAC in 1967 in 12 surgical patients, it called this uh, syndrome is acute respiratory distress in adults. However, out of 12 uh, surgical patients, two were children, still they uh, give this term uh, in adults only. But he, this term was not uh, until 1988 when Murray et al. gave on a lung injury score. Uh, almost very similar to the pathophysiology of ARDS, including chest radiograph score, hypoxemia score, including PF ratio. So, respiratory system compliance score and PEEP score. So, after six uh, years of uh, this uh, lung injury score, the American European Consensus Conference on ARDS was held and given a criteria. They categorized this uh, syndrome into two acute lung injury criteria and ARDS criteria on the basis of timing, oxygenation, chest radiograph, and pulmonary artery valve pressure. The timing uh, and uh, radiograph and pulmonary arterial pressure are almost similar in both ALI criteria and ARDS criteria. 
they differentiate uh, only on the basis of vaccinations means pf ratio less than 300 mm hg is acute lung injury criteria and less than 200 mm hg is the ards criteria so e cc is not without any limitations but uh, after even with this limitation who used this definition for almost 20 year till 2012 when berlin definitions came the limitation of uh, aecc was uh, uh, timing they says acute onset but they know they didn't define the acute means how many days and this is acute lung injury category with a pf ratio of less than 300 mm mmhg that most of the time misinterpreted as pf 201 to 300 similarly in oxygenations this uh, they take consideration of pf ratio only rather the uh, we all know, we all know that uh, there is a inconsistency of pf ratio due to effect of pep or uh, mean air pressure during ventilation so uh, they didn't take the consideration of pep in the chest radiograph this is bilateral infiltrates uh, and, and uh, as you know there is, there are many intra observer reliability uh, uh, intra observer difference in the chest radiograph so the reliability was poor and finally this is P, uh, pulmonary arterial well pressure this it is very difficult to measure the pulmonary arterial well pressures and there is poor intra observer reliability on pulmonary arterial well pressures on the basis of clinical assessment and they also not defined any risk factors for the ARDS so in 2012 uh, again a criteria of adult ARDS was uh, came on the basis on the basis of similar findings they defined the timings within one week in the chest imaging this is bilateral opacities that uh, not fully explained by fusion lobar uh, lobar or lung collapse or nodules they uh, describe origin of edema on the basis of clinical uh, assessment rather than pulmonary atrial valve pressures this is respiratory failure not fully explained by cardiac failure or fluid overload and they categorize uh, uh, ards into mild moderate and severe on the basis of pf ratio and on the basis of previous uh, records that uh, reports of the mortality between this uh, uh, this difference in the pf ratios this is a mild 200 to uh, 300 mm hg with peep or cpap more than 5 cm of water moderate 10 uh, 100 to 200 and severe uh, less than 100 however there are there are many limitations for children like invasive atrial oxygen monitor is very difficult in uh, some children and likely to miss less severe cases of ards use of pf ratio influenced by ventilator pressures as Uh, there is no uh, consensus consensus of the ventilatory parameters for children and uh, many and every center has different uh, uh, guidelines or uh, uh, practice to use pep or pip for ventilate these children and there are differences in risk factors ecology pathophysiology and outcomes between adults and children were not considered so <clears throat> in 2012 uh, there there is a committee was formed a policy committee was formed and uh, after 3 years after the formation of this committee they given a criteria prds uh, definition before going to the prds definitions let's discuss some important oxygenation parameter for non invasive ventilation non invasive ventilation so we can use sf ratio or pf ratio sf uh, they uh, like sf is the saturation by pulse oximetry So SpO2 to FiO2 ratio, PF ratio, partial pressure of oxygen in blood, PO2 on ABG to FiO2 ratio. On invasive ventilations, we can use the oxygen oxygen saturation index or oxygenation index. OSI is FiO2 into MAP divided by SpO2, and similarly oxygenation index uh, in oxygen oxygenation index, SpO2 is replaced by the PO2. To remember, use PO2 base metric when available. If PO2 is not available. Win FiO2 to maintain saturation of 88 to 97 percent to calculate oxygen saturation index or SF ratio. So uh, come to the pediatric ARDS definitions. First of all, age. Uh, in age, uh, uh, policy group does, doesn't define the age group, but they uh, exclude uh, neonatal premature neonates related to uh, lung disease, perinatal lung injury, incontinent respiratory syndrome, pneumonia. and congenital abnormalities they didn't define the upper limit age of the uh, children timing origin of edema almost similar to the berlin's criteria in chest imaging 
chest x-ray or ct like this is the finding of new infiltrate consistent with acute pulmonary parenchymal disease they remove bilateral or uh, uh, bilateral infiltrates this is only new infiltrates either unilateral or bilateral on oxygenation they divide into the non divided the patients on non invasive mechanical ventilation and invasive mechanical ventilation for non invasive uh, mechanical ventilations they didn't they didn't stratify cvrt uh, this is if child is on full face uh, full face mask bipap or cpap more than 5 cm of water with pf ratio less than 300 this is pardes and on invasive mechanical ventilation they stratified into mild moderate and severe ards mild on the basis of oxygenation index and oxygen oxygenation saturation index like 4 to 8 mild 8 to 16 moderate and oi more than 16 severe similarly osi between 5 to 7.5 7.5 to 12.3 and more than 12.5 12.3 severe they include some special population also that excluded uh, uh, in the berlin criteria like children with cyanotic heart disease chronic lung disease and left ventricular dysfunction they include cld on uh, supplemental oxygen non invasive mechanical ventilation invasive ventilation what regulates to then this oxygen criteria applicable this criteria is not applicable on the baseline uh, 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 saturations or uh, oxygen requirements so why uh, uh, oxygen oxygen index is considered in uh, prds not pf so let's uh, understand with the examples like a child with prds on day 1 uh, on ventilation having a pso2 of 120 fio2 on uh, 100% pf ratio is 120 and these are the ventilator settings map of 12 on 100% fio2 if we calculate the oxygenation index it comes out to be 12 similarly this or two days later this child has an same po2 of 120 fio2 requirement of 0.6 then pf ratio is 200 while seeing this pf ratio we find that the, uh, there is a some improvement in the child but if uh, we see the ventilator parameters child is on high frequency oscillatory ventilation with high map of 24 And saturation of one and a five to point six, and oxygenation index is similar twelve. So despite an uh, apparent improvement in P P O two or F I O two, oxygen index may be the same or worse, and the improvement may only be because of the increasing support. So that's why oxygenation index is more robust parameter than P F uh, ratio. So P R D S also define at risk pediatric A R D S. so they include the age timing original fdm chest imaging are the similar parameters but uh, different in the oxygenation like children on non invasive mechanical ventilation on nasal mask cpap or bipap and require an fio2 of more than 40% to attain a saturation of 88 to 97% and or oxygen by hfnc or uh, mask with the minimum flow of uh, 2 liter per minute in less than 1 year and similarly more than 10 years 8 liter per minute and in invasive mechanical ventilation saturation more than 88% but oi less than 4 or osi less than 5 then this is an at risk pediatric ards so come to the pathophysiology of the ards as uh, uh, ards either because of the direct in, direct injury or the indirect injury direct injury causes include pneumonia aspiration traumatic contusions fat embolism submersion injuries and inhalational injury in that in, injury includes sepsis shock cardio pulmonary bypass blood product transfusion there are many more causes these are the some common causes of the ards so in direct ards there are there is destruction of alveolar architectures followed by regional consolidations and in indirect injury it causes pulmonary vascular congestion and interstitial edema so alveolar involvement is more common in the direct injury than indirect injury so come on the mechanism of the pulmonary edema in the ards let's uh, this is uh, this blue and uh, uh, color so is our pulmonary capillary and this is the alveolar lumen and this is the uh, boundary of the alveoli usually the osmotic gradient favoring fluid resorption from interstitium is maintained by the retention of serum protein within the intravascular space if some much fluid leaked into the interstitium that is transported to lymphatics from which it is returned to the circulation and finally the tight junctions between alveolar epithelial cells prevent leakage of fluid into the alveolar space this is the alveolar capillary this uh, alveolar capillary uh, microscopy that shows that uh, it is lined by the type 1 and type 2 uh, pneumocyte cells type 1 cells are complex uh, branched cells with several cytoplasmic plates 
that are greatly attenuated uh, and relatively devoid of water release. This plate represents the uh, gas section surface in the alveoli. And the damage to these cells cause uh, uh, entry of the fluid in the alveoli and decrease clear clearance of the fluid. Type 2 pneumocytes have uh, un uh, similar uh, and several important functions, including production of the surfactant that plays an important to, uh, role to maintain the lung compliance. So, uh, like in this diagram, it is clearly shows the type 1 cells and type 2 cells. Type 1 cells are in the continuum and type 2 cells are uh, inter intermittently in the alveoli. If there is a fluid in the alveoli, there is a mechanism uh, in the alveoli to clear this fluid. Why these uh, channels, so like ENAC channels, sodium potassium ATPase channel, CFTR and paracellular pathway for polarized transport. And these uh, channels uh, 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 remove water uh, along the gradient generated by uh, these ENAC, sodium potassium ATPase and CFTRs. And by aquaporin 5, they remove the water. So once this uh, alveolar, uh, uh, this capillary endothelium uh, breakdown, it causes leakage of the protein in the interstitiums and uh, undoing the osmotic gradient, which normally promotes uh, fluid resorption, causes interstitial pulmonary edema. Similarly, if there is a breaking in the alveolar epithelial membrane, cause uh, edema uh, fluid in the alveoli, alveolar space. So direct injury and hypoxic, uh, hypoxic injury cause uh, uh, alveoli flooding with uh, fluids and inflammatory cells that cause again direct injury. This vicious cycle is going on uh, till we uh, remove the uh, causative agent. So uh, uh, the, this alveolar uh, epithelium and the capillary endothelium membrane rupture, this, uh, this cause uh, flooding of the alveoli with protein-rich edema fluid and sloughing of bronchial and alveolar epithelial cells. They form a protein-rich hyaline membranes and inflammatory markers include interleukin-168, TNF-alpha, stimulate chemotaxis and activate neutrophils. Now, neutrophils marginated uh, from the interstitium into the air space and release oxidants, proteases, leukotrienes and platelet activating factors. That, <coughs> this is the electron microscopy of the uh, diffuse alveolar damage with minimal alveolar septal thickening and HMD. So, after uh, this injury, our body has a uh, protective mechanism also to uh, remove this uh, inflammatory cells uh, uh, sl uh, uh, slough and uh, repair the epithelium and endo uh, alveolar epithelium and the endothelium. So, that, that goes, uh, means repopulation of the bronchial epithelium, resorption of the edema fluid by regeneration of these uh, sodium potassium metipase channel, ENAC channels, and the soluble proteins cleared by the paracellular diffusion and endocytes. Macrophage removes insoluble protein and apoprotic neutrophils. And uh, usually the epithelial repairs uh, uh, re with remodeling and resolution of granulation vessels and fibrosis. Usually uh, ARDS has three stages, exudative, fibroprolative, Creative stage and recovery stage. In exudative stage, there is a acute onset pulmonary edema followed by acute onset arterial hypoxemia and access to then diffuse, uh, diffuse infiltrates. This stage followed by chronic inflammation and scarring, uh, scarring with increased alveolar dead space and the refractory pulmonary hypertension. Uh, some patients from directly from exudative uh, phase come to the recovery phase and some uh, comes from fibroproliferative stage to recovery and some have an uh, irre irreversible damage to the alveoli and uh, refractory hypoxemia. In the recovery phase, uh, I already told there is a restoration of alveolar epithelial barrier, improvement in pulmonary compliance and resolution of hypoxemia. So, uh, with the help of morphology, histology and respiratory mechanism, mechanism we can uh, differentiate direct injury or indirect uh, cause of ARDS. Like in direct, there are more of consolidations, epithelial injury and alveolar edema and reduced lung compliance. In, in, in direct injury, there will be atelectasis, endothelial injury, interstitial edema, and reduced chest wall compliance. So this is the CT test of a child with ARDS. Usually having a three, uh, three or four different uh, uh, manifestations of disease, like some sparing uh, lungs are there. Uh, that shows a normal aeration. Having a, a, a pulmonary edema tells. Uh, alveolars with consolidations and atelectasis. 
that in between the unstable tissue located between these two types of tissue types that is that lactatic alveoli so come on the clinical features as uh, uh, i already explained in the pathophysiology there is a uh, disruption of the alveolar epithelium and capillary endothelial wall there will be rapid worsening hypoxemia with increased work of breathing to maintain oxygen oxygen level in the tissues so as a oxygenators there will be very difficult for the lung to maintain oxygenation and can manifest with tachypnea bradypnea bradypnea as muscle fatigue or uh, can lead to hypercarbia on auscultation we found bilateral crackles and wheeze in areas of small airway stenosis and chest x-rays showed the diffuse alveolar infiltrates ear bronchogram effusion atelectasis and finally involving fibrosis and that is our opacity now come on the management apart from the ventilatory supportive management we have we should uh, not be forgotten the underlying conditions we should treat the underlying conditions like sepsis or pneumonia should be treated with appropriate antibiotics infections uh, or uh, inflammatory source should be controlled and uh, use the adequate immunosuppression if the cause is autoimmune disorders now come on the uh, supportive management principle in ARDS we have uh, on ventilator we have to uh, minimize ventilator induced lung injury and block progressive acute lung injury from the positive agent and reduce ARDS mortality this is this would be our objective or uh, for the management of ARDS so always use protect and rest strategy strategy low tidal volume protect non dependent normal lung tissue from over distension reduce alveolar recruitment and de recruitment with the help of peak and next expiratory pressure and resting severely injured dependent tissue and we have to understand the ventilator induced lung injury and use uh, maneuvers that uh, open the lung and keep it open open collapsed alveoli and keep it open and you can use either uh, recruitment maneuvers with the uh, peep and no uh, non conventional ventilators including high frequency oscillator ventilation and aprv mode of ventilation so uh, apart from this ventilatory management there are also non ventilatory ancillary or non ventilatory management that help in the management of ards that include positioning steroid ino fluid surfactant nutrition and many more that i will discuss in the coming slides so come on started with the non invasive mode of ventilation this should be considered early in the disease in patient either at risk of PR, prds or in the mild uh, variant of prds the prerequisite for non invasive ventilation the child should be alert and cooperative this uh, non invasive ventilation help in timely recruitment of the alveoli improve gas exchange and decrease work of breathing and potentially avoid complication of invasive ventilation this should uh, non invasive ventilation preferably uh, used in some selected population of like immunodeficiency that uh, children at greater risk of complications and sometimes benefit more earlier and uh, non invasive mechanical ventilation to avoid uh, invasive mechanical ventilations so our uh, patient mohan worsening on a non invasive mechanical ventilations in form of decreased responsiveness he become bradypneic saturation of nimv is 92% at 70% of fio2 and blood, blood gas shows in a severe respiratory acidosis so we calculate the pf ratio that comes out to be less than 100 and so what next so uh, probably this child require an invasive mechanical ventilation so the proportion of uh, usually when the child worsening on, on ards means child is developed more of atelectasis consolidations or having a lesser part of the functional lung so the proportion of lung available for ventilation markedly decreases in ards and child respiratory com uh, system compliance will be decreased so adequate oxygenation may require very high ventilatory parameters in severe ards so with very high ventilatory parameters child have a risk of barotrauma or volotrauma so ventilation in ards may be challenging neither we, we will hold the ventilation and not give too much to do an uh, uh, ventilator induced lung injury so necessary therapeutic strategies should be used to prevent potential trigger for further lung injury so on conventional ventilation what mode of ventilation so there is no consensus consensus which mode of ventilation uh, we should use either pressure control or volume control mode of ventilation we can choose either one depend on the unit policy 
with which the unit is comfortable or more experience uh, the, that they can choose uh, any mode of ventilation. What tidal volume to use? So, uh, tidal volume 3 to 8 ml per kg of ideal body weight. Initially, uh, many studies show that a low tidal volume has a uh, uh, decreased mortality or the increased ventilator free days. So, low tidal volume should be used. So, what is the safe upper limit of plateau or peak pressure in uh, mechanical ventilation? So, uh, studies show that uh, upper limit of 28 cm of water uh, or up to 32 cm if increased chest wall elastance. How much people use and what is baby lung concept? Let's discuss one by one all of these uh, uh, parameters. So, on conventional mode of ventilation, uh, policy, rec uh, policy recommends low tidal volume uh, ventilation strategy like 3 to 6 ml per kg if uh, uh, poor respiratory chest compliance and up to 5 to 8 ml per kg closer to physiological in children with better respiratory compliance. Uh, this adult study shows a decreased mortality and more ventilated free days with low tidal volume and limited plateau pressure in adults with ARDS. So, low tidal volume uh, patient had a decreased mortality, higher ventilatory free days. So, the uh, policy also recommends uh, uh, ventilator children with low tidal volume. So, come on the next parameter PWP. How PWP helps in uh, this ARDS patient? PEEP improves oxygenation in ARDS uh, because higher PEEP levels open collapse and alveoli and decreased VQ mismatch or ventilation perfusion mismatch. Helping in achieving functional residual capacity. Uh, at uh, normal functional residual capacity, uh, there will be uh, improvement in the oxygenation perfusion as well as uh, uh, there will be a minimal pulmonary arterial hypertension. So, there will be decreased intracolumnary shunt or uh, <coughs> decreased ventilator induced lung injury. So, selecting uh, optimal PEEP, we have to make a balance between the recruitment and over distension. So, PEEP can be optimized uh, with the following parameters like gas exchange, adequate oxygenation and uh, uh, carbon dioxide, com lung compliance, PV loop curve, stress index, Esophageal manometry and uh, chest imaging. LC 2015 recommends severe PRDS. Uh, we can use PEEP up to 10 to 15 and more than 15 if required. Tighted to oxygenation and hemodynamics and monitor markers of delivery of oxygen and lung compliance. Uh, in pediatric ARDS, data lacking with regard to PEEP management. There are three RCTs in adults with ARDS that studied higher versus lower PEEP according to PEEP FIO2 ratio. PEEP was not analyzed in relation to collapse during end expiration. So, uh, they found that higher level of PEEP may be associated with lower hospital mortality in adults with ARDS as defined by PF less than 200. However, this positive factor of PEEP was not seen in those with more mild form of acute lung injury. So, come on the recruitment maneuvers. Uh, recruitment maneuvers are the voluntary strategy to increase transpulmonary pressure transiently or uh, open the alveoli transiently with the goal to reopen those alveolar units that are not aerated or poor aerated but reopenable. So, uh, again, we have to make balance uh, in the recruitment maneuver. We have to check either with this uh, uh, different maneuvers, we have to be able to uh, recruit alveoli optimally. If there is an over distension of the alveoli, that can again cause ventilator induced lung injury, decrease cardiac output, and decrease delivery of oxygen. And if we uh, repeat adequately, then there is increased oxygenation and decreased lung injury. So, in, uh, incremental PEEP uh, is a preferred method in pediatric patient. Other methods are sustained high pressure inflation, means uh, inflate the lungs uh, up to 30 to 40 centimeters of water for 30 to 40 seconds. This can be done by using an inspiratory hold maneuver. Another is intermittent uh, sigh pressure, three consecutive sigh per minute with tidal volume with p plat raising up to 45 centimeters of water. Extended sigh maneuver, use of high frequency oscillatory ventilation and uh, airway pressure release ventilation. Uh, when lungs are optimally recruited, Lungs uh, will be close to the functional as well capacity and at best compliance, decreased dead space fraction, 
lowest possible pulmonary vascular resistance and lowest, lowest possible driving pressure and best gases exchange. And there will be uh, less atlacotroma or uh, volutroma. So, uh, if you see the evidence, there are lack of convincing adult based data, no definitive pediatric data of recruitment maneuver. How best to apply recruitment maneuver still uh, questionable. So, uh, <clears throat> but what uh, these studies found that uh, sustained inflammation improve oxygenation in adults with higher lung compliance and incremental pre titration is safe and improve oxygen oxygenation in ARDS. There is no data showing improvement in the mortality or ventilatory phase while using recruitment maneuvers. So, uh, we should ventilate the child uh, between the lower inflection point and the upper inflection point. This uh, is a safe window of uh, ventilation. And at the, in this window, there will be the highest compliance of the lung with lowest complication. This window narrows down in the diseased lung. So we have to uh, prevent uh, over distension or uh, uh, at uh, atelectasis while using PWP or uh, recruitment maneuver. So uh, there is a, therefore, a concept, a baby lung concept, was given by Gattinoni et al. in 2005 on the basis that this disease is heterogeneous with having a small volume of uh, normal lung along with diseased lung. So this is in a heterogeneous lung. There are some part of collapsed alveoli and normal alveoli. And collapsed alveoli. So when we ventilate the ch uh, child with higher uh, uh, ventilatory settings, that it may cause over distension of uh, normal alveoli, alveoli cause volume trauma. And uh, if optimal PEP is not, uh, not given, it can cause cyclic opening and collapse of the under repeated level, like cause atelectotoma. So, uh, driving pressure, uh, concept of driving pressure uh, came in picture after the baby lung concept. So, our main aim is to aerate lung tissue in ARDS, uh, normal lung tissue in ARDS, that is a very small part of the lung. And the compliance of the lung correlates with the baby lung, not with the whole lungs. So even 6 ml per kg tidal volume can produce over distension of the normal lung. Even a lesser uh, tidal volume can be uh, optimum for uh, this uh, uh, disease. So tidal volume should be given corrected for the baby lung, not for the ideal body weight, must be considered. So driving pressure represents the tidal volume corrected for the respiratory system compliance. Compliance is the change in volume per change in pressure delta V by delta P and delta P is the tidal volume divided by compliance. So this is the P plat and this is the P. The difference between the P, P plat minus PW is the driving pressure. Means uh, tidal volume corrected with the respiratory system compliance. So we, uh, we deliver the pressures on the basis of driving pressures rather than the ideal body weight. So this is the uh, retrospective of post hoc analysis. Analysis was done by Meta et al. in uh, 2015 uh, of nine uh, RCTs. We found that uh, driving pressure as an independent variable associated with survival. If we see the result of this study, we found that at uh, uh, static peak with increasing driver with driving pressure, there is an uh, increase in the mortality of the patient. When uh, there is an incremental peak with the static driving pressure, there is there was no difference in the mortality. And when there is there was incremental peak with decreasing uh, driving pressure, there was uh, increasing survival or decreased mortality in the in the uh, patients. These RCTs are uh, all RCTs from the adult patient populations, not from the pediatric population. So we uh, should use the lung protective strategy like the low tidal volume low driving pressure and peak and uh, high PWP. So, uh, optimization of one component may negatively affect others, like increasing peak may increase that pressure, but this can be varied uh, from patient to patient. So, Mohan transported to uh, uh, if to, uh, uh, on the, after intubation or on convention and uh, after seven hours of intubation, resident exhausted and found that the settings, uh, settings was increased over the next seven hours. 
He gives him a tidal volume of, uh, at the 7 ml per kg, PWP of 13 cm of water, P plate of 30 cm, respiratory rate of 25 and FIO2 of 70%. We found that child has a worsening blood gas in form of respiratory acidosis. So when he calculated it, the oxygenation index, it is uh, still in the worsening trend, less than 100. And then any other option? We have a non conventional mechanical ventilation. In form of high frequency oscillatory ventilations and uh, APRV mode of ventilation. In, if we see the theoretically concept of HFOV, during uh, conventional mode of ventilation, there are swings between the zone of injury from inspiration to the zone of uh, to expiration, means more of electrochroma at the zone of derecruitment and uh, uh, volutroma or barotroma at the zone of uh, over distension. So during HFOV, the entire cycle operates in the safe window and avoids the injury zones. So, uh, the indication of HFO VR if uh, the P plat requirement is more than 30 cm of water on conventional mode of ventilation, P of more than 10, FIO2 of more than 60 to 80 percent, and oxygenation index more than 15 to 20, and child and persistent blood hypercarbia with pH less than 7.2. Our goal is not to achieve the normal CO2 and pH, but to minimize ventilator associated lung injury. We can tolerate the permissive hypercapnia and hypoxemia in children with severe ARDS. So, if we see the literature of uh, HFOP, they found uh, no benefit but potential harm in the adult ARDS RCT. Uh, RCT. They found that there, are, there is more mortality in the HFOP group than the control group. But uh, small pediatric RCTs and observational studies shows the improvement oxygenation, but no difference in mortality during mechanical ventilation or length of stay. So, uh, pertinent pediatric HFOV data are lacking. Adult trials shows no significant difference. And uh, from almost all adult ICUs, HFOV high frequency oscillator ventilation is obsolete now. And uh, but in pediatric ICUs, uh, still SFOV is one of the respiratory therapy in refractory hypoxemia. And they also found that anotropic uh, requirement is increased in HFOV patient. And uh, uh, in one of the study uh, in the secondary analysis, so significant longer duration of mechanical ventilation and greater use of sedation and paralysis, paralysis in HFOV. Now, there is another uh, non conventional mode of ventilation is airway pressure release ventilation. It is inverse ratio ventilations. Uh, given both mandatory and spontaneous breath. Mandatory breath in this mode is time cycle switching between two pressure levels in high flow CPAP circuit. So spontaneous breath superimposed on mandatory breaths. If we see on the scalars, like pressure time scalar, in uh, APRV there is a P high and P low. During P low is during the release phase when there is a T low. Usually T low we kept as uh, around 0.1 to 0.3 seconds. Or T high we kept around one one to uh, two uh, sec uh, seconds. So during that uh, T high, the patient uh, uh, can take a spontaneous breaths at higher pressures. But uh, if you see the evidence, there is very uh, low quality evidence in adults that shows uh, improved patient related outcome. But as RCT uh, from uh, PGH article shows the increased uh, trend towards the mortality. And convincing data still lacking. So, uh, uh, overall, not found to be useful in pediatric populations, and Palsy didn't, uh, uh, doesn't recommend uh, uh, APRV in uh, early phase. So, come on the uh, non ventilatory management. Now, prone positioning uh, is one of the uh, uh, prior uh, priority management in severe ARDS. Uh, in uh, supine position, if we see the there is more of the transpulmonary pressure in the distended alveoli towards the ventral side and decreased pulmonary flow, and low transpulmonary pressure in the atelectatic alveoli and more flow. There is increased shunting of the blood. This is because of the more of the uh, surface area of the lung is uh, adematous, and over that uh, the base of the heart compresses the wet lung during the. Uh, Prone positioning, there is a decreased uh, doors, uh, opening of the dorsal alveoli and uh, decrease over distension of the ventral alveoli. It 
it causes decreased shunting or we can mismatching in the lung and this is the first study uh, uh, in 1996 that so the cone position caused significant uh, improvement in the pf ratio during the prone positioning they found that uh, uh, during the prone position uh, there is pf of up to 242 60 and during the uh, spine position the pf ratio falls to, to la- less than 150 so this is the first study shows a benefit of prone position uh, in adult patient so adult study shows an uh, there is a uh, large single rct that shows a 50% motor reduction in severe ARDS and uh, adult ARDS shows an uh, improved oxygenation safe and potential mortality benefit in uh, with the prone position policy also recommends prone position in severe ARDS when pf uh, ratio is less than 150 uh, while using low tidal volume with paralysis and the duration for prone position should be at least 18 hours 18 to 20 hours when we con- till uh, when uh, we can discontinue uh, prone positioning when pf ratio more than equal to 150 requirement of pp less than 10 and fio2 requirement less than 60 we can say successful prone, uh, prone positioning when there is increment increment in the pf ratio more than 10% and uh, increment of the po2 more than 20 mmf hg on the same settings so there are some contraindication of prone position include acute bleeding Uh, multiple fractures of trauma spine instability raised intracranial pressure and tracheal surgery or stenotomy within 2 weeks it is not devoid of complication we should be cautiously do the prone positioning and at least 4 to 5 uh, healthcare workers should be should, should be present while doing uh, prone positioning otherwise it can cause complication also like dislodging of endotracheal tube uh, dislodging of uh, central venous catheter raining tubes can cause nerve compression crush injury retinal damage so uh, it to come to the another uh, ancillary management inhaled nitric uh, oxide as we all know inhaled nitric oxide causes smooth muscle relaxation uh, and modify immune function and platelet aggregation it bind with hemoglobin and rapidly inactivate therefore no systemic side effects the multiple acid is so then improve oxygenation with inhaled nitric oxide at, at the early uh, phase but no difference by 72 hours so uh, in cochrane 2016 so then the improvement in oxygenation index at 24 hours but no difference in ventilator free days so policy recommends uh, inu use in documented pulmonary arterial hypertension and severe right severe right ventricular dysfunction and in severe cases of pardes as a rescue form or a bridge to uh, ecmo corticosteroids in ards uh, there are many studies uh, uh, regarding the steroids in ards in adults this shows a mixed picture benefit uh, uh, regarding the efficacy and safety of corticosteroids but to finally they didn't find any significant difference in the mortality length of stay and ventilator free days so uh, policy overall not recommended in all cases of ards but may be tried on case to case basis now come on the surfactant uh, uh, initial studies shows that the surfactant uh, uh, cause improvement in the oxygen uh, oxygenation and decrease oxygenation index but didn't found any mortality uh, benefit and ventilatory free days with this use of surfactant very 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 important in ards patient there are multiple studies shows that the conservative food strategy shows uh, improvement in the mortality icu free days organ failure free days and a lesser requirement of the dialysis so uh, we have to maintain adequate intravascular volume and end organ perfusion and optimal delivery of oxygen after initial fluid dissipation and stabilization goal directed fluid management should be considered and try to prevent positive fluid balance so so our target for fluid balance should be less than 5% of fluid overload another important uh, recommendations are endotracheal tube cuff et tube should be used during the conventional ventilation and uh, saturation target will be in like 90 to 97% in mild to moderate ards and 88 to 92% in 
fever ARDS when fever requirement more than 10. Permissive hypercapnia uh, can be uh, considered in severe ARDS to prevent ventilator lung, uh, ventilator induced lung injury. To maintain pH between 7.15 to 7.30, we can tolerate PCO2 up to 70 if pH is maintained above 7.15. Uh, contraindication or exception to permissive hypercapnia are intracranial hypertension, severe pulmonary hypertension, selected congenital heart disease lesions, and hemodynamic instability. Like uh, come on the other uh, pulmonary specific insulin treatment, suctioning, uh, it is our reflex or elegant reflex that uh, when child not maintaining saturation, our first reflex is to do the suctioning. There is some secretions that can cause hypoxemia in this child. But uh, suctioning, in severe ARDS patient, uh, frequent suction can be detrimental. And suction should be performed with cautious to minimize the risk of degree recruitment. And pr priority is that we should use the closed suctioning system rather than open suctioning system. And routine installation of isotonic uh, saline prior to suctioning is not recommended. Can be used when there is a thick uh, tenacious secretion. This is a recent uh, uh, study published uh, this month only. This is an experimental study. They found that when uh, there is when a uh, single abrupt deflation from high peak means when you discontinue the vent, uh, ventilator from 82 and the repeated short deflation from moderate peak caused pulmonary edema, impaired oxygenation, and increased uh, pulmonary vascular resistance. So we should be very cautious while uh, disconnect the ventilator of a child with uh, high peak. Uh, another therapy like heliox, prostaglandins, uh, inhaled uh, beta agonist, anesthetic cysteine, or cuff assisted devices are not recommended at all. Stem cell therapy is uh, still in the experimental phase, but uh, uh, studies on the animal shows a beneficial effect of the stem cell therapy. So, other non pulmonary treatment is sedation and uh, neuromuscular blockade. Sedation should be used to facilitate tolerance to mechanical ventilation and optimize oxygen delivery and to uh, uh, prevent this If a uh, patient has been still, uh, uh, is still not able to ventilate the child on uh, sedation and analysis, we can use neuroblockade also. But we should consider a daily neuromuscular blockade holiday to allow periodic assessment rather than continue neuromuscular blockade infusions for uh, many days. This is the RCT is uh, published in NEGM. This was an, in a cohort group uh, of uh, ARDS patient in which uh, muscle relaxant was used. So then mortality benefit and uh, uh, increased number of ventilator free days. Transfusion, uh, our target hemoglobin is 7 gram per deciliter in clinically stable children with adequate oxygen, oxygen delivery. In other children like hemodynamically unstable children or severe hypoxemia, we should target a hemoglobin of 10. And regarding nutrition, we should uh, facilitate uh, or we should increase nutrition within 24 hours of admissions to facilitate recovery and maintain the growth of the child. Because severe ARDS or, uh, uh, is a very catabolic condition, so we have to start uh, nutrition as quick as possible. Once child stabilize, Immunity stabilize or uh, even on the maximum ionotropes, we can start nutrition. So, this ancillary therapy, uh, like inhaled and or prone position, is more beneficial in direct uh, ARDS than indirect ARDS. Uh, recruitment maneuver is more beneficial in, in, in indirect ARDS. We should uh, consider ECMO. Preferably within first week of the ARDS, when uh, PFS is less than 75, oxygenation index more than 40 for 4 to 6 hours, child had a hypercapnia with pH less than 7.2, and lung compliance less than 0.5 ml per centimeter of water. We should, daily, uh, we should do a daily assessment uh, with the predefined criteria of extubation readiness to avoid unnecessary prolonged ventilation. Before direct intubation, we should use a spontaneous breathing trial or extubation readiness test rather than direct extubation. So, uh, overall mortality is higher in the developed countries up to 60% and uh, in uh, developed countries it is up to 30.5%.
outcomes depends on the underlying clinical status and the involvement of the other organs also in adults mortality as per new berlin definition was 13.9 for mild rds 11.3 for moderate and 25% for severe rds so uh, i will summarize the, the management of severe rds in uh, severe rds this is the protocol that uh, we use in uh, pgi uh, as i already told severe rds if oxygenation index is more than 16 osi more than 12.3 pf less than 100 and child had severe hypoxemia so we go step wise start child start children with conventional ventilations with pep uh, uh, 10 to 15 pep rate less than 18 and low tidal volume if this fails then we can give a trial of uh, recruitment maneuver proning inhaled nitric oxide if available and still uh, uh, hypoxemic on this uh, trial then we can use a non -vent uh, non conventional ventilator like hfov starting with map of 20 to 25 with frequency of 10 to 15 and amplitude of 16 6 to 80 consider hfov early if there is an air leak uh, or pneumothorax or bronchopleural fistula Our targets and monitoring are most of the session targets would be 85 to 92 percent means permissive hypoxy, hypo, hypoxemia to maintain PO2 between 60 to 80. Increased PO2 should be tolerated if PO2 is more than 7.15 or 7.2, except in rare ICU or severe PH. Access should be done daily in high frequency oscillatory ventilation. Echo 24 to 48 hour to look for the myocardial dysfunction or right ventricular dysfunction. Uh, fluid balance we should you uh, attain negative balance after optimizing hemodynamics restrict uh, intake uh, 60 to 70% and target community fo less than 5% we can use diuretics furosemide infusion 0.05 to 0.1 mg per kg per hour to maintain community fo less than 5% children should be start with uh, pseudonalgesia with a target uh, comfort b score 11 to 17 this comfort b score is a uh, pseudonalgesia score for uh, ventilated children uh, neuromuscular blockade uh, uh, start if unable to effectively attain oxygenation and ventilation on uh, uh, only on pseudonalgesia so we can use uh, vicronium or atracronium with a vicronium with a dose of 0.07 to 0.1 mg per kg per hour or atrac 5 to 15 mg per kg per minute we can use recruitment maneuver as i already told preferentially therapy uh, proning inhaled nitric oxide and the nutrition start enteral nutrition within 24 hours attain full enteral feed by 48 hours calorie protein intake there are multiple formulas uh, so field uh, equation is most commonly used for uh, nutritional assessment and uh, steroids uh, should be used uh, based on do on the patient if considered use the iv methylpad within first week of ards start with 2 mg per kg stat over 15 minutes Followed by one mg per kg per day as a continuous continuous infusion for seven days or till extubation, and then 0.5 mg per kg per day. Half the infusion rate every third day and stop by day 14. Blood transfusions so if hemodynamic stable target seven, if effective hypoxemia target ten. Un uh, unnecessary suctioning should be avoided, and always use humidification. And uh, if nebulization was considered, then avoid use vibrating mesh nebulizer. Ventilator nebulization only. So this is the winning protocol. It starts on HFO, win map by two centimeter daily. Look for the clinical improvement. If map is less than eighteen centimeter of water and FiO two less than fifty percent, consider conventional mode of ventilation. Put on initial PEP of seven to eight, tidal volume six ml per kg, stop neuromuscular blockade, and consider spontaneous breathing trial when PEP is twelve to sixteen, and then win uh, of. to non invasive chemical non invasive ventilation and extubate if i pap is 10 to 15 and if pap of take home message do not use niv in severe rds low uh, use low tidal volume and high pep strategy with low pep pressure consider prone prone ventilation in severe rds hfo in refractory hypoxemia can be considered but doesn't uh, found to be any mortality benefit in studies steroid can be used in but selected patient pulmonary rds respond better to ino and prone compared to extra pulmonary rds extra pulmonary rds better respond to recruitment maneuver compared to pulmonary rds ancillary treatment is as important as ventilation thank you thank you so much dr lalit till in presentation
in the palace definition uh, there many things have been done away with so is there any indication in case uh, there is a congenital heart disease or a chronic lung disease or alv dysfunction is there even these patient can have a rds or they should not be put in the definition of a rds in case they were already have sir already the palace put this specific patients in the rds if child has an worsening uh, respiratory parameters or respiratory or uh, having a respiratory disease uh, if worsening parameters from the uh, above the baseline then we can put this disease in the ards definition pediatric ards definition like a uh, like a uh, uh, children with so unexpl- uh, that means unexplainable respirat- uh, respiratory worsening over the previous status uh, may like prompt us to help of uh, echo card body echo cardiography if we have a bad side uh, focus or uh, we can uh, monitor the ejection fraction or myocardial function then we can easily think either this is respiratory uh, worsening because of the respiratory disease or because of the worsening of the cardiovascular uh, system so one more uh, just for experience sake because uh, some of the friends who have been uh, uh, ventilating and managing ards in other parts of the country uh, the duration of actually prone nursing nursing although it is said to be around 18 hours at least but uses their experiences the proning helps only when it is prolonged for 7 8 9 even 16 uh, days Yes, so what should we do this how many minimum average hours if you have then you do proning in your patients sir uh, this is very this is very nice question actually uh, we uh, do a proning position uh, for a 16 to 18 to 20 hour in a stretch then for 2 to 4 hours we can do an supine uh, position and then again proning position so It the cycle continues for some some days this will be continue for some days till uh, the, the uh, policy criteria fulfilled like we have raised more than 150 pp requirement less than time or uh, we have uh, raised more than uh, 1 150 what about others any questions from other people so are you using lalit inhaled nitric oxide in your uh, icu no ma'am uh, inhaled nitric oxide is not available in the not ICU. available na no? Even in Delhi, it's not available. In Delhi, AIMS is available. AIMS it is available. Okay, so that was the other thing which was interesting to me was in which select patients would you use methyl prayer? You said you mentioned in some select patients. Uh, actually, ma'am, we uh, like in patients with refractory hypoxemia and uh, presenting within uh, uh, presenting with severe uh, uh, hypoxia and require no higher ventilatory settings and uh, suppose. we use uh, methyl prayer in almost uh, rescue therapy like patient note uh, seems to be improved within 2 days or 4 days and having a refractory hypoxemia we start with methyl prayer okay thank you any other so people about have... methyl prayer ask let ha aap pooch lijiye uske baad let others also ask ha huh? uh, anyone else please any questions ma'am you are can you unmute yourself yes. Shalini unmute and ask. Shalini has, I think she has lost the connection. So meanwhile, uh, so uh, by your talk, I could summarize that in case you have to use steroids, they will they may be beneficial either in the early course or first to seven days in case they are indicated, or late in when the remodeling has occurred. In between, there may be no role of steroids. Uh, usually they are uh, the steroids have a role only in the early phase like in the exudative phase not once the fibrotic or fibroproliferative stage sets in so when in the later stage also or in uh, steroids are not uh, helpful at all so early on in only case they in are the indicated yes. so i think sanjeev 
हाई लेवल डॉक्टर संजीव किया इन ए आर डी एस पेशेंट मैनेजमेंट वाइल वेंटिलेटिंग ए पेशेंट लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम कम्स वंस अलॉन्ग विद ए आर डी एस देर इज ब्रॉन्को कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन एंड हाउ टू मैनेज दैट केस वेर एक्चुअल योर वेंटिलेशन स्टडीज आर नॉट गोइंग टू बी एफेक्टिव यू मैनेज योर ब्रॉन्को कॉन्स्ट्रक्शन पार्ट स्पेसिफिक इंडिकेशन ऑफ यूजिंग स्टूडेंट्स in this case we can use uh, steroids also and another thing we can use nebulization also but better to use uh, mass vibrating nebulization attached with the line circuit and another thing is uh, most of the time the cause of ARDS is fluid overload so here we have to stick the uh, restrict the fluid to 60 to 70% and uh, decrease the uh, uh, fo percentage fluid overload percentage in the child either if the fluid overload is more than 15% we can either use rrt or if your output is adequate we can use uh, diuretic if you child uh, is hemodynamically stable have you uh, done sustained high pressure maintenance uh, for di- uh, for recruitment and up to how much how many centimeters of pp you have gone uh, sir uh, routinely in refractory hypoxemic patient we use the uh, uh, sustained high uh, uh, pressures and uh, with the help of uh, inspiratory hold maneuver we can give an uh, sustained high pressure to the patient for uh, around uh, 20 to 25 seconds and uh, definitely it, is, it uh, helps in the recruitment recruitment of the alveoli mm-hmm. like. when up to, uh, how much uh, peep you have uh, g- gone up to while giving sustained high pressure maneuver actually uh, Uh, for high sustained uh, maneuver high sustained pressure maneuver we go actually we use uh, inspiratory hold maneuver to give that pip you can up to 35 no, no. So we can set the pip and give yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, 20 to 25 yeah, yeah. my question was up to how much upper end of pip you go for giving sustained high pressure up to 35 cm of water we can give uh, yes, And you sustain this for twenty to twenty-five seconds. Twenty to twenty-five seconds. Okay. So uh, on the this is a clinical ground. What help? What clinical change you get just after giving sustained high pressure maneuver? Uh, Do you see some? Uh, okay. okay. Uh, well, so that is the end point we are looking looking that, looking for after giving sustained. There is a question from Doctor Sarika. and if there's no other yes, question then we will thank and uh, finish dr sarika yes, please get get my one question so dr lalit it was excellent presentation and uh, one question i have so what is your practical experience about the incidence of barotrauma and volvo trauma with that high peak because we have to titrate peak between high and low value when when we uh, when uh, uh, we are ventilate the child with very high setting we should be very uh, very much prepare for the air leaks because the all in already injured uh, lung or uh, there are very very much chances of uh, air leaks so uh, uh, in every uh, 10th or 15 patient we land up with the uh, air leaks so it is okay. not uh, uncommon uh, volitrom or barotrom in uh, severe adis uh, children okay and uh, okay just one more question as uh, th- that ma'am has pointed about the use of the steroid so is it like that all those children all those not in fact uh, a proportion of children who who present as pibo they require methylprep in setting of a rds most of the center not using uh, steroids but uh, in, like uh, Uh, in refractory hypoxemia uh, most of the practitioners start with the initiate steroids uh, as early as possible but there is no consensus when to start or when not to start this is okay. uh, depend on the intensivist uh, when when he feels that this patient requires steroids like child has an severe refractory hypoxemia 
then preferably they will start the steroids. Okay. Thank you. I think Arpita, you can wind up. Thank you so much, Dr. Lalit. I'll give it to you. Thank you, ma'am. It's an immense pleasure to be here in front of you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lalit. It was an excellent presentation and we've been uh, greatly benefited and up, we have surely updated our knowledge on pediatric ARDS and its management. So uh, we'll be sending you a certificate for uh, uh, being a speaker in our uh, uh, LMNI lecture series. And thank you so much and we look forward to more interactions and more uh, talks from you in future. We have perhaps recorded. We have perhaps recorded his talk, yes. and you have no objection. Can be signed by you, and can be put it on our pediatric YouTube, departmental YouTube. If you have no objection. I have no okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The other people also, Dr. Mala, Dr. Chandrakanta. We all are a proud yeah. family. Hello. So we log off. Thank you. Yes. So thank, thank you, Lalit. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lalit. Thank you very much, ma'am, again. All the best for your bright future. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.